What's up everybody, it's Fabio here from Noise and today I'm gonna to reveal my mastering chain to help you master at home. First of all, great to see you again. It's a really, really nice sunny day in London, but I've decided to spend it indoors because I wanna make a video for you. I'm really excited to be back, so please remember to like and subscribe so you can watch these videos twice a week. I did make some promises to show you the new studio, but it's just still not ready, and I wanna do a really, really dope video on the whole thing, so you're gonna to have to wait a little bit for that one. I mean, you have seen a little bit, and I did get this new couch, which I have to admit is super uncomfortable but I guess that stops me falling asleep. Anyway, back to our main topic. Mastering is the final process of making sure that your track is properly balanced. This can be achieved through EQ, compression, saturation and loads of other methods that are just going to tilt it all into place. The amount of each effect depends on the state of the delivered track and what the mastering engineer and the artist is trying to achieve. Um, yeah, but also, no. That's definitely an important part of the final stage, but it's not the most important part of mastering. We'll go through the loudness bit at the end of this video so I can show you how to compete with those commercially released tracks. You can totally master your own music at home on a good set of speakers, a good sounding room, and with a good set of plugins. You might struggle if you don't have those things, but it's not impossible. A mastering engineer like myself has dedicated a lot of time to different aspects. For example, the sound of my room, the state or the quality of my equipment, and of course, years of experience using these bad boys right here. A combination of these things means that myself or another experienced engineer knows how to deal with the issues at hand straight away. We also know when not to touch anything at all. Yeah, okay, but Keep it to yourselves, all right? A computer, of course, my Prism Lyra 2 audio interface, some very high quality custom made cables, hooking up the interface to the speakers, and then I have three sets of speakers for different reference points. And if I need to do a final check, I also have a pair of open back headphones. I will do another video on how I have the speakers properly set up at some point and how I've acoustically treated the room, but we'll save that for another time so I can go into more detail. So this is a chain I've been working on for about two years now and you know, every two months I might add something, remove something, change something. It depends on what I think sounds good and every track is different. I'm gonna run you through all the plugins that I use and then we'll listen to some A-B comparisons of before and after mastering right at the end. Ah, oh, hi there. The FabFilter Pro Q3 is my go-to EQ. It's always the first thing in my chain. I have it set in linear phase mode, which is fantastic for mastering. I won't go into too much detail as to why, because to be honest, it's really boring. I'm using the FabFilter Pro Q3 mainly to cut out the sides below 200 hertz and then to boost them above 2000 hertz. So we're tightening up the low end and making things a little bit wider at the top. I tend to cut with this EQ rather than boost. Usually there is some mud between 100 and 200 and some harshness between 2000 and 5000, but I'm generalizing here. Every track is different. It's not always necessary, but I do like a little bit of multiband compression to control just the low end or just the high end. Sometimes you might have a bit too much sibilance from vocals or maybe hi-hats, or you might have your kick and your bass just not sitting so tightly, and it can help bring all of those things together. The UAD SSL G Bus compressor is a classic. I'm sure everyone knows about it, and if you haven't, it's probably the most popular mastering compressor in the world. It's quite clean, very easy to use, not too many options, so you're not fussing around so much. The attack and release settings totally depend on the track. If I'm trying to do something with a little more oomph, it'll be slow attack, fast release. If I need more control, it will be fast attack, medium release. I keep everything at a ratio of about two, and don't forget the high pass filter, which I usually set to around 150 hertz. 
After compressing, things can sometimes sound a little bit dull. So I turn to the Millennia NS EQ2. Now there's a couple of versions here. You can get the Plugin Alliance version, and I think there's one in UAD too. What I'm doing with the NS EQ is any final boosts or cuts to maybe give a bit more presence and body, or take out any further mud or harshness that I might have collected along the way. Again, I'm keeping things really simple and really subtle here. Once I've got everything sounding the way I want it to, I go for a bit of saturation. Now, depending on the track, I either go for the black box or the Studer A800. They're both fantastic saturation plugins. It just depends what you want. I use the black box if I need more mids, more high mids, a bit more presence and grit around that area. And I use the Studer A800 if I wanna add more character to the low and the high frequencies. Saturation is great because it kinda acts like a compressor, an EQ and a distortion unit all in one. It's all about how much you drive it or how subtly you decide to apply it. And last but not least, I use a UAD Dangerous Bax EQ. And this may sound ridiculous, but what I love this EQ for is the 24 decibel low cut. I just think it sounds great. It's not too little and it's not too much. It just takes off any low end that might be in excess towards the end of the mastering process. Now, to get things up to volume, I actually use two limiters. I use the Waves L2 and the FabFilter Pro L2. The reason behind it is you don't want one limiter working too much. If you can get two limiters that you like the sound of, it can even be two of the same limiter working together, one dealing with it a little bit, another dealing with it a little bit more, I bet you'll find that you can get your tracks a lot louder. This is really common and popular amongst many mastering engineers. I'm gonna play you a couple of tracks now with before and after examples so you can get an idea what they sound like with and without my mastering chain. One last thing to remember, and you've probably heard this a hundred times, you can't polish a turd. So mastering isn't gonna save you if your mix doesn't sound good already. I understand that you may not all have the budget for these plugins, but try and copy them. So find an EQ, find a multiband compressor, find a saturation unit. There are loads of great free plugins online and stock plugins that will take you to where you need to be if you're thinking about mastering at home. Thank you so much for tuning in guys. It was a pleasure to have you always. See you in a few days with another video here from Noise. Peace.